Thanks, Brett. That was an impressive presentation. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Ken Lung from Exactel. So we're going to go from infrastructure works down to QSs and quantity takeoff and cost control. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Ken Lung from Exactel. Thank you. So, Das. I can't see on the screen. Hmm. Sorry for the technical issue. Won't be long. work, but can't solve on the screen. Well, we take a while, you know. Sorry about that. So, uh, first of all, you know, I would like to thank Hong Kong Light Beam and CIC for inviting me to um, deliver a presentation in here this year conference. Okay, let me introduce myself. You know, uh, my name is Ken from Exacto Limited. Uh, basically, I'm presenting a topic called innovative beam solutions for project management and quality surveillance, you know. Okay, like, um, well, you know, people will ask, you know, um, beam is pretty popular in Hong Kong and um, everywhere around the world. Then why we use beam? Okay, so people will say, you know, make my life easier. And of course, people will say, you know, um, BIM can improve their productivities. I mean, you know, most of people will think, you know, ah, 
well, being, is that possible to make me um, go home earlier, isn't it? So people will um, come up to me and ask me, well, you know, you tell me BIM is so useful, you know, do you have any innovative ways to do the work? I mean, so that's why today I present the topic, how innovative, you know. If you're more innovative, innovative um, then you'll be, um, find the benefit of using BIM. Okay, see, it's been a while, you know, a little bit changing, so it's also innovative, you know. Okay, then um, people will tell me, you know, um, what is the key part of success for using BIM? Well, you know, because I'm not a designer, to be honest, I'm a QS. So I will more speaking, you know, like the, um, the point of view of QS and project manager. So um, for something important decisions, you know, or decision making, you know, we always rely on information. So today, I would more talk about focus on information. If you control the information, handle the information much better, then you'll probably find the way of success in the BIM stories. Okay, now, before we move on to this um, um, today presentations, you know, I will also will, um, go back to the definitions, you know, to let you know why I say information is so important. Well, you know, so if you look up the definitions, I'm sure everyone will seen it many times before, but I just want to focus on some of the keywords in here. One of them is ability to use. The second one, we use. And also exchange information. Why I'm saying that, you know, because I do believe, you know, if you want to successfully using BIM, you need to really focus on these keywords. How to use it better, how to reuse the data, we already got it. And how to exchange information. That is something we achieve time savings. So let's really, really focus on these keywords. Okay, now, look down to the definitions, you know, if you achieve all the, um, the key factors, you know, um, how to utilize BIM information, I'm sure everyone will find something at the end like that. By implementing BIM, risk is reduced, design intent is maintained, quality control is streamlined, communication is more clear, and higher analytical tools are more accessible. So, well, you know, sometimes, you know, when you look up the definition again, you will find success elements in there. Okay, now, I'm not talking about um, theories anymore. We just focus, what does BIM means for PM, project manager, and quantity surveillance? Okay, well, I just want to highlight three um, issues in there. I think, I do think, you know, BIM models contain most important data of measurements, properties, and classifications. Secondly, BIM can provide consistency and automate quantification. And lastly, BIM can assist in the significantly reduce the variability in construction costs and estimates. You know. Okay, so we know this is important for QS and PM. So we, not, we can't, can't just stay away from that. Now, we have seen um, people designing structural models. We have seen people designing architectural models. And also, I have, we have also seen uh, MEP model as well. So you can see, you know, it's not just on one uh, single uh, discipline. I think it's all across to this um, whole construction players, you know, even for MEP, structural, and architectural. So I think it will um, dominate the things in future. Okay, but people will ask, you know, if being so powerful and so useful, is that full solution yet? Okay, so people will just wonder, um, is that possible to be the end of the world for QS or project management, for project manager? Yeah, because people will say, you know, so quick and so powerful, you know, one single button can solve everything. That's no use for QS anymore. Okay, I don't think so. So, do you think so? This is something we should look um, my presentations further. 
Okay, so I leave the crew behind, you know. Okay, people will all say something like that. It's bean means Chinese word, bean, bean, bean. Yeah, it's quite, the pronunciation is quite similar. It means always changing, you know, just change the method of doing the work. Uh, well, you know, before we use 3D joints, and now we just use 3D joints, but still the same, the workflow and still the same the people, you know, just change the way of, way of working. Well, some people do believe like that, but because the reason why they, they say that, because they can't find the success element from using BIM. So something, you know, we need to think again. Do you want to be a smart guy, like the one in you know, the red color? The one with think the uh, most innovative solution? That's the guy can win the things for you, okay? So do think again how you, um, you know, get well into the uh, beam movement. Okay, well, it's not that easy. Well, you know, I just give you just two examples in here. Then people will say, why some, you know, some of the things I said before is so challenging and so troublesome. When you look up the, this example in, uh, on the screenshot in here, um, you will find, you know, like um, some of the uh, information is not really completed. And, you know, when I want to measure the structural wall, like the one in, in this example, you didn't see the finishes um, information built inside the models. Obviously, you can see, you know, from the screenshot, you know, two parts. One is in here, okay? So the one in blue color is on the top. It's having different finishes compared to the one in the below. So why the big model didn't tell me so accurate information? Okay, have you looked down to the second one? which is a structural concrete beam, also experiences some similar problems, okay? So the information if you in a beam model is pretty limited, only like length and volumes, you know? But, you know, when we're doing uh, accurate uh, measurements, or even for project management to, um, to monitor the site, um, the progress, um, this kind of information is not enough. Basically, we have to, um, rely on more information to build in the model to able to make a more accurate decisions. So something, you know, uh, really lack in this, at this moment. Okay, now we come up um, some of the real questions in here. How does the project team utilize the beam data stored in the reference model? Second question will be, how does the project team add the extra parameters within Cossex or even in reference software to able to store more information for the purpose of generating cost report or schedules. Lastly, how did the QS conduct cost track? So if such an information is um, accurate and correct, you know, enough for the um, cost estimating purposes. Or even for PM, you need to make a decisions at one critical moment, you know, because we know on site everything is changing all the time. We need to be able to react quickly. So something you know, um, that's why today's presentation, I want to mention information. If you don't get hold of information, I mean, you just lost track of the project, you know. So um, that is the really um, screenshot I really like the most, because that guy holding the information, how we get hold of the information is crucial and important. Otherwise, we'll would be just like the other guys, have no clue at all, and just have a cloud on top of the head, you know. So in Chinese word, it's like, so do you want to be a guy like that? Or do you want to be a guy like the one in the blue color? So it's up to you. Okay, well, you know, um, in order to uh, make it um, better in the project workflows, you know, I have decided to be workflows for beam modeling and joints. So, firstly, uh, before we uh, do something else or do, um, you know, to um, work on the beam models, it's important to have a model review. Secondly, you need to check the modeling method. And then, review the beam data inside. 
And lastly, identify any discrepancy or errors in them. Then do it all the steps in here before you make a decisions how to improve the BIM information. Okay, so a couple of steps in there. I will explain um, everyone in details, you know. The first one will be look up in the model review. This is uh, shading things, you know. So you can see, you know, um, when the designer modeling this object, you know, they didn't provide you the area of the shading things. So that is something you need to identify right at the beginning, then tell the architect, you know, to make the model more uh, better and reach the data inside the BIM models. Okay, so this is another second example, you know, um, which is a generic models. I'm sure everyone encounters such a things like that many times before, you know. Well, basically, just tell you a slab, nothing else. So is that possible to uh, give you more uh, necessary information like concrete gray or even which level was that? Yes, it's possible. But somehow, you know, the designer may not understand your requirements on site, whether it's uh, from project manager or even for QS. Okay, so this is something you know, lack of communication. Okay, another one, metal welding. You can see, basically, just tell you metal welding and nothing else. And the information I circle out is volume. So, well, you know, <laughs> for everyone as a PM or QS, you know, probably you know that is something is pretty really quite useless. So, how to, um, you know, have a guide? Do we have a guideline, you know, to know what's the output of the BIM model? No, sometimes we don't because we lack of planning and lack of, um, you know, um, the, um, what we call a project goals. So something we need to um, figure out before we do something, uh, we, do, we really work on the, um, the project. Then you can make a decision better. Okay, this is another example. I just don't want to explain any further because this is an MVP model, also experiencing the same thing. Okay, now, um, the other um, issue we have found um, um, so far we, in the any BIM project is um, all the designers maybe have a different method of uh, modeling. Um, so far, I have identified three methods. One is uh, unjoin and overlap. The other one is abutting, and the last one is join and overlap. But I do give a remark in here. Different modeling technique may give you different answers. So you need to really be aware about that, okay? So now this one, you know, you can see the step across the, the columns. This is the first modeling technique, okay? The second one is like um, a button. So we just, um, every models will stick together. But have a look on the last one. So this is the slab. It's not across the beams and also the columns. It's just in the center point, okay? It's a centering, uh, centering, center line method. Okay, so that's why sometimes when you look up the quantities, it's not really reflect something on site. Okay, the quantity may be wrong. So you, if you rely on this information, well, you get in yourself in the trouble. Okay, now another one, joint discrepancy. Always, you know, similar um, like 2D joints, you know, designer may be not really focused, maybe not uh, joint properly. So this is something you're mixing in this drawing. But you can't see from here because I don't give you the clue. If I give you the clue, tell you what's happening in here and what's happening in here and also in here, you know that's something missing. Part of the wall is missing, part of the uh, metal welding is missing, and the window frame is missing as well. So if you don't do model checking before you do measurements, well, you know, um, you get bashed by the clients, you know. Okay, now, uh, look at the 2D joints. You can see 2D, you can see all the items in here, but not in 3D. Something discrepancy between 2D joints and 3D joints. So, well, you know, do really uh, careful, you know, don't trust the designer all the time. You need to do some things really on yourself. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say bad things about designer, but you know, this is general point of the QS and project manager always arguing you know, with architect, you know, why you don't provide accurate information to me, you know. Well, you know, you're not going to change all the time. I mean, even from the old days, you know, to the 
uh, beam technology, this situation is not going to change. Okay, we're still arguing. You know, that's the way of we are living in this world. You know. Okay, more important now, <laughs> talk about how innovative solutions you know for PM and QS. Well, four tools. You know, I've got to mention in here. First one would be share parameters. Second um, tools I can uh, recommend in this presentation will be room and area. Third one would be system assemblies. And the last one would be scheduling. OK, first, share parameters. Well, you know, I'm sure everyone knows you can add extra parameters in DWF or DWFX format. So if you um, lack of details, you can always add into the models inside reference. So you can uh, insert QSID, um, some Adamantium code, um, or Hong Kong SMM4 code, you know, and trade codes in there. And it's also important, you know, for designer to uh, put level information into the BIM model as well. So that could be helping the project manager to do analysis or doing uh, schedulings, you know, time schedulings, so you know, project um, face by face, you know. So something you need to really aware about that, okay? Now, con constraint, of course, you know. And then last one will be, um, for perhaps um, for QS analysis, will be uh, reinforcement ratios. Okay, now, um, it's pretty simple. And I think, you know, do um, remember, you know, extra information gives you extra uh, strength to do decision making. Okay, so um, for QS point of view, you know, um, if the designer can also build in the uh, parameters like beam width, beam height, slab thickness, that would be great for us. And it saved me a lot of days, you know, to measure up the concrete formwork or even for some reinforcement um, in there. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of demonstrations um, in Hong Kong, you know, and I feel, you know, it's also good, you know, to put some um, ASD code in there, you know, in order to work out the um, cost estimate. So this is something, you know, uh, I've been uh, presenting to ASD recently, you know, you can also um, categorize all the beam object into different elements. So you can see on the screen, one is the preliminaries, the other one is a um, substructure, and the third one will be a superstructure. Okay, and also, you know, we recommend, you know, to put QS identifier into the BIM models. So in this case, is, you know, I have put in the two levels of information. The first one will be the concreter. Okay, you can see um, I have been circled up on the top with the QS ID. And the second level of information will be the floor. So if I put some QS identifier inside the BIM models, what you're going to do is, you know, you can generate the result um, in order to suit your need. Okay, so you can see, you know, in cost six, you know, you can categorize all the uh, items in a different um, tray or SMM format. Okay, this is something, you know, saves you a lot of time and improve your efficiencies. Okay, so not just, um, you know, um, save the amount of um, the QS do, do measurements and also save the project manager to, without to um, submit the program or submit the progress payment much easier. Okay, this is another example. You know, if you highlight um, concrete columns, will be give you the link back to the joints, will be highlighted inside the joints. So I think, you know, beam solution is great for everyone in here. Okay, as you can see, you know, um, further example, um, we have um, also a function called user defined properties. So you can just add in some uh, extra parameters like beam depth, beam height, and beam width in Cosmic software. So you can see many BIM software is capable to let you to insert more information. I think, you know, uh, this is something, you know, why I say at the beginning, information is crucial. Okay, so generate result, really powerful and useful and save the time of your day. And you can go home earlier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the, um, the last example of shared parameters will be the cost code. Um, in cost six, you know, I have been um, demonstrate a uh, couple of people's before. I have inserted the cost code, and they can give me uh, automatically pricing at the end. 
So the QS won't need to find the cost by themselves. It's all done automatically. So the cost code will link back to the, the beam joins, then work out the cost for you. Of course, you need to build up the database before you do that. But again, you know, save you a lot of time without to search the information and generate the result just like that. Okay, beautiful and easy to track, all the trials, everything. So you can see why people talk about BIM. So you can see there's a benefit now, okay? So you can see quickly result can be done like that. Okay, and then as I said before, you know, you have a live links, you know, and it's, uh, it's pretty um, helpful, especially for the clients or property owners. People will now realize, you know, if I work out the costs uh, pretty efficiently and quickly, I can do something um, value management right at the beginning of the project. Value management is mean, you know, how can we achieve design savings? Design savings is crucial because once you uh, plan the, uh, a more smarter building right at the beginning, then you will properly uh, monitor the cost and control the cost much easier to pull out the whole project stage. Okay, now, second tools uh, in this presentations, I need to speed up quite now, okay, because I think um, Warren will kick me out pretty shortly. <laughs> okay, now, womb and area. I'm sure people know with it, um, have a function called womb and area. Again, you know, for project management, uh, when you monitor the site, you know, you need to have some information like that. But all the time, we don't see that information appear on the 2D joints or even on 3D joints. So again, you know, I'm just remind everyone, you know, this is a tool helped you a lot. Don't forget it, you know. Okay, so you can see, you know, once you take the box um, for exporting this information, you can share everyone. So why I say at the beginning, share information is important and they, you can tell you from here, once you take the box, share this information, everyone can uh, know the information about which one, you know. Okay, then you can see, you know, uh, doing measurement is quite handsome, and time saving can be achieved in this example. So, third one, system assemblies. Well, you know, um, to be honest, I, in my cases, you know, um, I've been working with many QS consultants and also architects. Uh, they don't realize the assemblies, you know, um, the, the, um, the benefit. Um, because, you know, they think it's pretty time consuming to do that, you know, they don't want to break in the parts. And eh? sometimes, you know, they don't group it together. It's really up to you what your requirements are. If your requirements want to um, just group everything together, it can be done in reference. I'm sure everyone will know that, but just a matter, do you want to do that or not? Okay, so you can see this example, you know, it's a concrete structure slab. Okay, if you uh, look up uh, in the examples, you will see um, four different um, uh, layers in there. One is the uh, finishes on the top, second layer is a substrate, and the third one will be um, binding layers, and the concrete structure itself. So you can see, you know, um, when you break in the part, you know, then you can give you an edge, you know, to work out the cost more effectively. Okay, so, well, this is the tips, you know, I give everyone today. So take a look, you know, feel free to do so. Okay, so you can see, once you do that, everything, your life, I'm sure will be better. Okay, scheduling. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to talk anymore, you know, because basically everyone knows scheduling by today, you know. I'm thinking, you know, some people may be more expert than me, you know, but I just want to highlight, you know, a key schedules, you know, when you produce from reference, you know, that is something is only take you less than a minute. But it saves you thousands of days, you know, um, um, to, uh, to do it by yourself. Okay, so in Cossex, we also do the same. You know, we just filter up the, um, the elements, the object, you know, then put an Excel. So you can see um, after I had done that, 
I can produce the door schedules. Just think about one or two minutes, oh, sorry. But if you ask the QS or project manager uh, to produce your schedules, or you'll probably just take you a couple of weeks or a week you know, to do that you know, before you do material ordering, isn't it? So one or two minutes, compare one week, you can see huge difference in there. OK. Um, another topic I want to mention today's presentation will be beam model analysis. Um, you know, um, people now we talk about cache detections, you know, and I think it's, uh, it's good, you know, because we not just have our uh, solid uh, one architectural models or just a MEP model. Um, before we move on to the next stage of beam, uh, beam implementations, you know, these two models we need to combine together. Okay, so this is architectural, this is MEP. We need to put it together, okay, to know what is the problems and what is how to coordinate on site. Okay, so if you're using software, you can visualize it and find the problems you know on site earlier. And then, if you find the uh, problems in there, you probably um, know how to make a design savings right at the beginning. So. Do remember, um, you know, Beam software provides you a good solution for cache detections. Okay, so this is example I, I work on Cossex, you know. Um, this is example, you know, uh, of five surfaces pipe um, hanging on the ceilings. So you can see that is something on um, the screenshot. I make it bigger, you know, zoom it back uh, to let you see it more clear. You can see it's perfectly hanging on the ceilings. So you, you notice, you know, that design is um, um, something you know um, where it's located, okay? Because uh, when you make a decisions, you know which uh, item is more expensive than the other items. You need to consider site conditions, isn't that? So project manager or QS always need to know where the uh, this um, five surfaces pipe is located. If it's like um, more than hundred meters on the top. It costs you a thousand, isn't it? So, beam model, I think, it's, can provide you a good solution to look up and know where is um, the um, the, uh, the item is located. So that's why information again is important. Okay, now um, people will just uh, know, you know, our software is capable to do auto revisioning, and I think um, it's good. In this presentations, you know, I want to um, talk about revisioning because, you know, as you know, um, construction sites is always um, need to be uh, aware of all the variations and also the all the additions or deletions. You know, so how to know all the variations work, especially where the money's come from, isn't that? Q QS like the CAMS money, um, so PM will also do do the same. Okay, so. Track the changes is important. So, how? Now, see, combine two models together, you can see the results straight away. It's all auto detections. Okay, you can track the changes. You can see the big models, you know, um, some of them is highlighted in green color, and some of them is highlighted in yellow color. So, what's that mean? Okay, I'll just tell you what's that mean in here now. Green color is mean additional work. Okay? Yellow color means there's a size changing, dimension change for this particular object. Maybe, big, uh, maybe bigger, maybe or smaller. I don't know. But we, need to, we can find out from the big models. And red color means deletions. Okay? So you can see if you're using 2D joints, it's impossible in this, situ uh, this situation, isn't it? Okay, now you can, uh, you can work out the cost. You know the revision one cost. A revision to cost, and then you can have a lot of revision lock, you know, to identify all the changes. Okay, uh, quickly, level of deformment. Um, as you know, people were progressing all the time, and you, maybe sometimes in the, at the beginning, <laughs> yeah, I know, don't worry, yeah, you may be not, <laughs> you may lack of information, but once you progress, you can see um, power caps and reinforcement details. And also, you can produce 2D joints. I think um, some of the um, you know, presentation have shown you before. 2D, 3D can combine together. 
to give you the answer. Okay, final words. Wow, trust me, only final words. <laughs> <laughs> Execution plan. I'm sure everyone knows CIC um, also produced a paper, but I just want to mention again, uh, execution plan is important, okay? You can see all the uh, crucial uh, topics in there. That could make your BIM project more successful, okay? Now, uh, what I'm finding is, you know, for this presentation is, you know, I think Rapid and Cosex can give you a strength, and you will probably know how to implement BIM from why to how stage. Successfully implement in many countries around the world, you know, make Hong Kong or in Asia knows where we are heading at. I think, you know, uh, people will switch the old system to new system. Functions like I talked before in here, uh, shared parameters, room and area, system assemblies and scheduling are definitely helping you a lot. Okay? And also, um, uh, even the model didn't contain the necessary information, and I think you know courses can give you the um, the tools you know to add more informations. Okay, and lastly, I think uh, from this stage, you know, two D, three D drawings is also will work um, together to give you uh, the full picture. Um, I think this is something um, I really would like to share out today because I feel you know I have seen people has successfully implemented BIM. And I know what is the tricky part to do that. So um, I hope you enjoy this uh, today's presentations. And I wish you to see you soon, OK? So um, and again, slogan. <laughs> this, is a, this is a long goodbye, Ken. OK. <laughs> to be a BIM thinking, OK? Thank you, everyone. Um, I wish you to see you soon. Well done, Ken. Good presentation. It's good to see